Running a test for engine compression on your Sprinter should be easy, but for some reason it's not. So I needed to figure out a creative solution, which in this case meant using this tool right here, which is really meant for a completely different vehicle. Now, whether you're looking to purchase a used Sprinter van or just trying to figure out if your van has any problems, a compression test can be extremely useful. The problem is compression tests done by these fancy scan tools don't offer a complete picture. This is why doing a manual compression test is absolutely necessary. And I'm gonna show you what tools you need to get this job done. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but it's important to know how the scan tool measures compression versus measuring it directly off of the cylinder. So really, how does this work? Because obviously there's no pressure sensors sitting inside the cylinder next to the injectors. Obviously your engine doesn't have that. So how does the scan tool measure compression? Well, the short answer is that it doesn't, at least not directly. Instead, it measures something else entirely. You see, the test occurs with the engine off and the starter cranking, which means your engine is turning over using power from just the battery. And that's an important point I'll circle back to. Now, using the crank position sensor and arguably a little bit of dark magic, the software is able to figure out exactly where each piston is in space. So why do we need to know the position and why is it important? Well, your cylinder experiences the most resistance right here when it's at the very top of the stroke. When it's compressing all the air and gases within the cylinder, that's when it's gonna to be toughest for your starter to move that specific cylinder. So your scan tool can one, know which cylinder is going through this position and it can match that position with the little spike in power draw that your starter needs to push past that cylinder's top dead center. So it matches those two values up and it says, okay, it required this much power to get over the top dead center position on this cylinder and it required that much on this cylinder, etc., etc. So it matches up those two values, the instantaneous power draw and the exact position of each cylinder. And that's how it figures out your engine's compression. Hence, this test is known as sort of a relative compression test in that it's really useful for figuring out when one cylinder is blown out while the others are fine, but it's not that great to figure out the overall health of the engine and that they could all be equally worn out or equally healthy. And this test won't really know the difference. And that's why it's so important to at least test one cylinder manually. Now there's two ways you can measure compression. You can either go in through the injector hole or you can go in through the glow plug. You can gain access through the injector, or you can gain access through the glow plug. Now for the injectors, there's quite a few options. You have what's called a Miller Tool 9543. Um, let's see here. Uh, currently sold out on eBay, but I saw it a couple weeks ago for an insanely low price of about 25 bucks. Um, alternatively, there are people who are just taking an injector a newer style injector. It has to be the new one if you want it to work for both new and old vehicles. Um, 2007 plus injector here, and they're just hollowing it out and making their own compression tool, which I think is really creative and awesome. Problem is it's a little expensive, and you could argue that going in through the injector is probably the least efficient way of doing this test. Now, this right here is a Sprinter glow plug, and it's a lot easier to get to. 
The problem is I couldn't find the right adapter that fit this glow plug. Until I remembered that the Ford Power Stroke 6.7 has essentially the same glow plugs, which is really useful because you can take any compression tool that fits on these plugs and use it for your sprinter. The good news is that these 6.7s are a lot more common. So this adapter is only $20, $21. This happens to be the one I purchased. Again, always look for the cheapest price. Um, if there's a better deal out there, please take it. Okay, so great. We have this $21 adapter tool that works on a sprinter. Problem solved. Well, we run into a slightly different problem now in that this quick release is a little bit unique. Let me show you. This is a far more common quick release that you see on most compression tools. This one's a little different, and as you can see, it's a little bit atypical. These are two diesel compression gauges straight from Harbor Freight. Again, I like to save money where I can. This is a common quick release. It fits on the most, it fits on pretty much any gauge you'll see on Amazon. No problems there whatsoever. The problem is this one doesn't fit on the regular ones. So you kind of need to buy a special one that's a little more expensive. Now these quote special ones are only about 70 bucks depending on whatever kind of deal Harbor Freight is putting on at the time. But there's a better solution because you might be paying, I don't know, 60, 70 or 80 bucks for this on average at Harbor Freight, whereas on Amazon, now you're paying 70 for the gauge and then you're paying another 20, 21 for the adapter. Amazon has a complete kit that has this adapter or slightly different version of this adapter in it. Now I wasn't able to find this version of the adapter anywhere with the regular quick release at the end. So if I had to do it all over again, there wouldn't be a doubt in my mind that I would go this route and just purchase this kit. As always, search on Amazon for a better deal. If there was one point you need to take away from this video, simply search for a compression test kit that says it works with the 6.7 Ford Power Stroke. That's all you need. Everything else I've mentioned so far is secondary details. So I've showed you how to conduct a proper compression test. But if your van is running funny or if it's experiencing low power issues, there are other things you probably want to check first. This video here addresses a performance issue that most Sprinter owners overlook. Found strength in the silence Miles make me feel alive No more chains holding back Got a clear path to drive